Hi, my name is Michael Goh. I've been asked by Move Shoot Move to re review this device here, the Sifo Rotator. The device does a number of functions. It does star tracking, time lapses, and panoramas. It weighs 0.46 kilos. Just as a comparison, my ball head weighs 0.4 kilos, the Siri K20X. Now what's in the box is the Sufo rotator, a hot shoe cable, a quarter to three eight adapter, a couple of small Allen keys, a micro USB charging cable, and also a bubble level. How it works is you rotate the dial clockwise or anti-clockwise to the various functions, and it rotates the device clockwise or anti-clockwise. You charge the device using a micro USB port. On to star tracking. The reason why you do star tracking is to be able to extend the shutter speed of the exposure. Generally speaking, uh, if you don't have a tracking mount, is that you can, there's a rule of 500, which basically says how long you can do an exposure before star trailing becomes obvious. The advantage then of using a star tracker is that you can expose longer without obvious star trailing. Another advantage of, of star tracking is that the images are still a little bit sharper, even if you're applying the rule of 500. Setting up for star tracking, they've provided an option for purchasing a laser pointer, which helps you align with Polaris. However, this form of alignment is quite limited in the Southern Hemisphere. How I align for the Southern Hemisphere is before mounting the device, I'll point the, the unit directly south using a magnetic compass, adjust it for the declination for the location, and also have it angled up based on the latitude. Now I suppose the big question is how does it actually function in terms of star tracking? I've managed to track it using my full frame camera, a Canon 6D with a 50mm lens for four minutes without any star trailing. Once you've got good alignment, it appears to track quite accurately. Time-lapsing. Now for time-lapsing purposes, they've set up an interesting method of operation. They're using a hot shoe mount, which plugs into the device, and after each shutter, it rotates based on a preset that you've made. This of course means that you need to have an intervalometer, either an internal one or an externally mounted one, but it seems to work quite well. Currently it works with Canon, Nikon and Sony cameras. It doesn't work with your Olympus, Panasonic, and also your devices like GoPros and so on. I did have an issue with this cable up here if I was to lose it. However, I did try it with an alternative flash trigger with a PC sync cable and it still worked. The panorama mode works in a similar way to the time lapses, is that it works on a preset. So after each shutter, it'll move a certain angle. Now pros and cons of the device on the on the positive side, it's very small and light, it's very packable. So I've got no problems with carrying it on trips with me. The battery life is very good. I ran it for about 22 hours in star tracking mode with a camera mounted to it uh, before the low battery indicator came on. On the negative side of things, or things that could be improved, I mentioned before that for time lapsing, it would have been nice to have a faster automated function for things like your GoPros, where it just automatically pans across that would have increased its functionality. Another area for improvement for this device is around polar alignment for star tracking. A lot of portable star trackers have the same issue. So it would have been nicer to have a wedge or something else that helps with a polar alignment. In summary, I think it's a fantastic device for what it wants to do. Once it's been properly aligned, the star tracking is quite accurate and it does time lapsing quite well as well. If you want to know how to buy it, the link is in the description. There's also a discount code that's there as well. If you have any questions about my experiences with the device, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Thank you much, Lane.